Hi guys, I wanted to do a spring look today, but I also wanted to do something a little bit different. I don't usually wear a lot of smoky eye makeup, and I know that I've gotten a lot of requests for that. So I'm going to take the chance today actually to show you a daytime appropriate soft smoky eye look. It's going to be a very springtime feeling and it's also, I think that it's also quite modern because I'm going to be using some bluish greenish mossy green tones on my eyes. I'm going to pair it with a baby pink lip um, like the one I have on right here. I think that it brings out the spring um, feeling to the whole look and it also makes you look a lot more youthful. Um, so here we go and I hope you enjoy this tutorial. So I already have my moisturizer on. Now I'm going to use the Innisfree Mineral Moisture Fitting Base as a primer. This is a very good primer for dry skin. I think that it actually smooths out um, the skin while moisturizing it. Um, a lot of a lot of primers can be very drying, and if they are not drying, then they don't really do much. But this one actually does a little bit of both, and I think it works really well on dry skin. Um, I have really, really dry skin these days, and it's really not um, looking too great. It's kind of a little bit bumpy because it's really dry. It's also really red, and I have a lot of red patches everywhere. I'm going to use the Shirimura Stage Performer BB Perfector today. This one is really lightweight, and it just blends really well. It also smooths out the skin a little bit. Um, it does say that it's a skin smoothing beauty cream. I find that it's pretty long lasting on my skin because it's very moisturizing. I think for dry skin girls, the key to getting long lasting uh, foundation is to find something that is that provides the right amount of moisturization. As long as your skin is moisturized well, makeup shouldn't come off that easily because if your skin is dehydrated, it actually produces more oils and that's the, that's the part that makes it um, less long lasting in terms of your base. I'm going to go in with the NARS Creamy Concealer. This I think acts as a pretty nice base because it has like an HD effect to it. It's very very natural. If you don't have really horrible under eye circles like me, you will find that this is more than enough coverage. But for me, it's um, it's it's okay. It's the coverage is not bad for a cream concealer or a liquid concealer, but. I still need to use my RMK concealer palette, which is my all-time favorite, to put on top. So I have the RMK concealer palette. I'm just going to dab it on the areas where it's extra dark, especially these two areas right here. And I'm just going to concentrate it on that area. By layering two different types of concealers and liquid and cream, you can create a more natural look. And I'm going to use the setting powder from this palette. It's a really great under eye setting powder. It's completely foolproof. I can just use this little brush from the palette. Now I'm gonna go in with my YSL Touche Claw. This is in number two. I really like using this concealer pen, um, or highlighting pen actually, it's not a concealer pen, because I think it's sheer and it gives a very very natural highlight without using any shimmery things, any shimmery powders or anything like that. It just makes it look really really natural. I don't really like using concealers to do this step because it's too thick. It doesn't work on my dry skin. 
I guess it does work on normal to oilier skin types, but on me it doesn't really work. Now I'm going to set my foundation. I'm actually going to use the Wet Beauty Blender that I used to put my BB cream on. I think it's a very effective way of putting loose powder on. You might think that it's a little bit weird because it's wet, but actually it doesn't really change the texture of the powder at all. And if anything, it makes it adhere onto the skin a lot better. So I can just dab it on. And I love using sponges to put on loose powder because I think it's the best way for dry skin. I'm using the Shurimura loose powder right here. It's very, very good for dry skin, I can see. So on camera, I think it's still sort of looking like I'm really pale um, on my face area and it starts to look a little bit darker down in my neck area. In real life, it really doesn't. Um, I guess because I also have a ring light at the back that it really catches on to the BB cream, especially because the BB cream has um, SPF 30 as well. So that could all contribute to making it look a little bit more ghostly on camera. But uh, if you're not taking photos or anything, in real life it looks really nice. I'm going to go ahead to do my brows now. As I said in my last video, I'm really into using liquid eyebrow pencils. Um, it's actually very popular in Japan and you can find a lot of Japanese ones in um, Asian drugstores. And don't worry, these don't actually, they're not actually very opaque, so you won't look like you're drawing on your brows with a Sharpie. As you can see, it's very translucent, and it's, you can say that it's hardly enough to really draw on a brow. If you have enough eyebrow hair, then this would be enough and you don't need another product. Since I have to draw out the, the shape of my eyebrows, I need to use a, another product. I'm going to use a regular eyebrow pencil. This is from the face shop. It would be better to wait for the liquid part to dry a little bit more before you go in with a regular eyebrow pencil but um, for this video's sake, I'm just gonna go right in. So we're finally getting into the more exciting part. I'm going to use the Watercolor Mist Eye and Cheek Palette by Laura Mercier. This is the Spring Limited Edition. Um, you don't have to use the exact same products as me. If you don't have this, just choose any palette that you like. So I'm gonna go in with a light olive tone. This is called Fog right here. I'm just gonna put that all over my eyelids. You can bring this a little bit higher up. It's a very sheer color, as you can see. It's really not very, very um, hard to use and it's very easy to blend out. That's why I like Laura Mercier shadows. So I'm just going to slowly build this up really. So I'm just going to take the color out a little bit farther from my eyes. My eyes are very round. Uh, I don't really like it too round. So to make it look longer, I'm going to take out the color a little bit. Now I'm going to take another color called Storm. I'm just going to use that, use a MAC 239 brush to pack on the color. You see that it's very, very pigmented. So I'm just going to put this right near my lash line and up, just above the crease a little bit, but without going over the first color. So it just looks like I have a gradient. I'm gonna use the same MAC 217 brush and just 
blend it out a little bit. Don't need to over blend it because honestly, Laura Mercier shadows pretty much blend themselves. Now I'm going to use a smaller brush. This is from Innisfree. There's no name for this, so I don't really know what it's called. And I'm going to use the darkest color in the palette, which is really not too dark. It's called Cloud. It's a dusty blue. And I'm just going to use that sort of as a liner, but smudged out a little bit more. So I'm going to use this concentrated near the lash line and wing it out a little bit. You really don't have to be too precise because we want this look to be very soft and effortless and very appropriate for daytime. And again, I'm going to use the 217 brush and just smooth out any any parts I think need a little bit of blending. But don't blend too much because you do want it to concentrate on the lash line. Overall, you're just trying to create a gradient. There's really it's not really, there's no rules or anything that you have to go by. Depending on your eye shape, everyone's different. So you just have to work with your eye shape. I'm going to use a 239 brush and go in with the cloud color again. And I'm just going to concentrate that on the outer corner of my eyes. This is the area where my eye is the roundest, so it actually it doesn't go out like this, it goes up right away. So I like to extend that out a little bit so that my eyes are more almond shaped. And I'm not going to take the color very low because this is the part where my eyes are very, very round. So if I put the color underneath right in this middle area, it's going to pull it down even more. So that's not what I want to do, for this look at least. I'm going to use my Etude House Play Pencil in number 49. It's the brown one that I always use. And um, because I want this look to be very, very soft, I'm not going to use a black eyeliner. And I'm going to use brown instead. So what I did was just coloring in my waterline and extending it out in the outer corner. This inner corner of your eyes is very, very important. Make sure you have enough eyeliner in that area. It really brings out the eyes and it gives it a lot more definition. I'm going to curl my lashes. This is the Shiseido curler. It's not the the US version though. This is the Asia exclusive version. So so you can see that it's not a light silver color, it's the titanium colored one. And I'm going to use my Majolica Majorca Lash Expander Edge Meister. I've talked about this in my recent favorites video. This has like fibers on it and it's brown so again I want to keep this look as soft as possible. I'm also going to put some mascara on my bottom lashes. So you can take as much time as you'd like to build up your lashes especially with these fiber mascaras you do need to put the effort into building it up slowly, you're not going to get a very um, volumized look um, the first time you put it on. So you do need a couple more coats. Okay, so I finished with the mascara. I actually have about two coats on. What I don't usually like to do after this step and after putting eyeliner on and everything, I like to look at the eyeshadow part and to see if I need to add any more color. Um, you, It's a good time to add color because 
now that you've got the whole eye shape in place and lashes getting in the way you might not see as much color and you might be able to define define the eye shape a little bit better um, using the eyeliner and the mascara as a, a guide really so that's what I like to do I go back with the darkest color which is cloud and just going to add that on the outer corner and now you can really see how far you can take it up and give the eye a little bit better shape I'm going to add a little bit in this corner as well just to give that 3d effect and not in the middle of the eye and the whole purpose of this really is to add more color as you go and it's more of a safer way I think I'm going to put a little bit more of the color storm which is this light green color because I kind of lost a bit of that while I was putting in the blue and during this time you might interfere with your um, mascara so you might have to go back and curl it again as well. And I'm going to use my 217 brush to just clean up the edges. Now I'm going to do my cheeks. I'm going to use the Clinique Colourpop Cheek Pop Blush in 04 Plum. You can use any pink blush you want, but I think pink looks best with this eyeshadow. In just a little bit, I'm not going to put too too much on. I'm using the Dior Addict Fluid Stick in 389 Kiss Me. This is one of my favorite baby pink lip glosses. I love this formula. The Dior Fluid Sticks are really really easy to use. They are long lasting, really great on chapped lips. So I think they're totally worth the money. I actually have a few colors. And that is it. I think that um, with the bluish greenish smoky eye and soft pink lips, I feel that it's really appropriate for daytime or nighttime. I hope I didn't bore you with this tutorial. Uh, it's not really a tutorial. It's just me playing with makeup really. I'm not I'm clearly not an expert at this, but um, I love playing with makeup and I hope that you like this look. Uh, you will see you next time. Bye!